API development is really important, especially when you want other services to access your data. Sometimes you can give it for free, other times developers have to pay to access your API. If the developer has to pay, then you have to make sure that the API you are putting out is reliable and easy to use. Otherwise, developers will not use your API and will look for something else. For this course, we are going to use API resources. API resources is a transformation layer that transforms your eloquent models and the JSON responses that are returned to the end user. At this point, this might not make any sense, however, it will become clear by the end of this video. First, we need to create a product resource class. Remember, we are working with products, so we need a product resource class. We can do that with the artisan command php artisan make resource product. Inside app http, you have a new folder, a new directory resources, and inside here now you have the product resource. Laravel uses a convention, your product resource represents the product model. So this resource represents this model here. Be careful though, do not confuse them. This is the resource and this is the model. So they have nothing in common. This is an eloquent model. Okay. As far as the names are the same, you do not have to make any other modification for the resource to communicate with the eloquent model. By default, we have a two array function that will transform the resource into an array and this array will be converted to JSON when we send the response. Inside product controller test, we specify the attributes that we expect. ID, name, slag, price, and created at. However, because this is an eloquent model, it will also return updated at, which we do not need. We can verify it when we log the response. So if I go down here and I say log, info and response get content so if i log this and i also have to open my log file so let me delete this old one okay now we of course have to run this in order to see it working so again vendor bean php unit tests feature HTTP, controllers, API, product controller test. So if I run this, again, we return green. However, this time we log the response. So you can see that we return the name, the slag, the price, and of course, created at. However, we return updated at as well. And this is not part of our assertion. We do not have an updated at. We do not need it. So we can use the resource that we just created to return the exact data we want to return. Now I will open this resource and I will override the array and specify the attributes we need. So return, this is going to be an array. So we need the ID, we need the name, we need the slag, uh, and of course we need the price and the created at. Okay, so this is the resource and this is the data that we need to return. Now we can change the store action to use the resource instead of the eloquent model. So open the controller, the product controller, and instead of returning the eloquent model, we can say new product resource and we can pass the product. Of course, we have to import it, so I will go up here. The namespace is HTTP, resources, and then product. Now, we have to give this a unique name because we already have a product model. So, as you can see, these do now conflict with each other. So, we can name this product resource, which is exactly what we used here. Product resource, product resource. So if we go back and we run the test again, you can see that the test again returns green, so there is no change. However, 
Now we are using API resources and not eloquent models directly. If we go back to the, to the log file, you can see that everything is the same pretty much, except one big difference. The create that is now an object and not a string anymore. So here, as you can see, this is a string. So it returns just the timestamp. However, because now we are using API resources, create that is an object and it has some additional information such as the time zone type and you know the time zone also and some other stuff. Anyways, now the idea is that we want this to be a string so we can very easily convert it inside the resource. Okay, so we make this a string. Now, if I run the test again, you can see that created that is just a string now. And of course, updated that is not part of this response because, well, we do not ask for it, right? And because we do not ask for it, we do not even include it in the, in the response. So the only things that we return are the ones that we define here. If it is not defined, it does not return. Even though we have not done a lot, you can see the power of API resources. We can transform the data that we return. We can change the data type as we did here. We can even change the names, right? So suppose, suppose you do not like the name created at, and you simply want to say created. You can very easily do that. So you just change the name here. And then if you run the test, you can see that in the log file, it is not created at anymore, but created. Of course, the test will fail because inside the test, we expect it to be called created at and not created. I will keep it as created at. It makes more sense to me. However, it is up to you to name it whatever you want. So if I run the test again, it should return green. Okay. Let me delete the log because we do not need that, save, and everything is good.